seconds. I don't know whether to thank Creator or Puxatani Phil for this amazing day out there. I'm going to thank both of them. So if you haven't taken advantage of this glorious weather, now is the time after service. In unity, we begin everything with prayer. Let's take a centering breath and open to the divine in all of us and listen to this prayer. On this day, we dedicate our hearts to peace on earth. We appreciate everyone's spiritual journey and the abundant blessings bestowed upon us. In unity with all who seek to express freedom, joy, and transformation, we welcome our divine inheritance as creators. In harmony with this truth, we live to the best of our ability with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. And so it is. Amen. Our prayer chaplains are trained to hold sacred space and pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. If there is anything in your heart to be held in prayer, we invite you to see Betty after today's service at the front of the sanctuary. Our chaplains will also pray for you during the week, so please fill out one of those little lilac prayer request slips and place it in the wooden box outside the office. Chaplains can also visit in times of need. Just please let our office know. Remember, all prayers are confidential. And now, let's join Holly in singing Spirit Alive in Us. Good morning. So the chorus on this song has an echo for you guys. The song goes like this. Spirit, you're alive in us. You're alive in us right here. Spirit, you're the light in us. Shining bright through us right here. Spirit, you're the love in us. Reaching out with every touch, Spirit, you're the voice in us, rising up behind a hush,
edge of the harriers, flying like a laggard bird. Yeah. Right here, spirit, you're the light in us, shining bright through us. Right here, spirit, you're the love in us, reaching out with every touch. Spirit, you're the voice in us, rising up behind the hush. Thank you. And now it's time for our Unity Intentions. We're a lively bunch today. That's good. That's good. It means we're here. We got, the, we got the perfect speaker for that energy today, so stay tuned. Now it's time for our Unity Intentions. Please affirm with me together Unity's founding principle. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the source of all good. And now our Unity of Lawrence vision statement. United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And finally, our Unity of Lawrence mission statement. We are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. And now, please welcome our special music guest, Greg Pellegrin. I can do this with everything on. There we go. All I need is a monkey on my shoulder. Ah. Uh, well, I thought I'd start off uh, talking about a little thing about faith and fear, and this is a song by a, a guy named Guy Clark. Some of you have ever heard of him. He's a folk singer, and uh, he wrote this song, and it's, uh, it's about a little boy that wants to fly, and it's called The Cape. It's kind of a little mantra thing. I like those mantra songs, if you remember the last time I was here, but uh, anyway, this is called The Cape. Sack cape tied all around his neck. And he climbed up on the garage. He's a figuring, what the heck? He screwed his courage up so tight that the whole thing come unwound. He got a running start. Bless his heart. He headed for the ground. Cause he's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith. Spread your arms and hold your breath and always trust your cape. Now he's all grown up with the flower set cape tied all around. His dreams is full of piss and vinegar and he's busting at the sea. He licked his finger and he checked the wind. It's gonna be do or die. But he ain't scared of nothing now. He's pretty sure he can fly. Cause he's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith. Spread your arms and hold your breath. Always trust your king. He 
It's old and gray with the flowers that keep tied all around his head. But he's still jumping off the crash. Will be till he's dead. For all these years, the people said he's just acting like a kid. He did not know he could not fly. So he did. And he's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith. Spread your arms and hold your breath. Always trust your king. Yes, he's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith. Spread your arms and hold your breath. Always trust your king. Spread your arms, hold your breath, and always trust your king. Thank you, Greg. And now for our speaker today, Jay Pryor is a speaker, author, executive coach, and lay member of this congregation. And as we like to remind ourselves every time we see each other, we are also birthday twins. Please welcome Jay. <laughs> So you've got double Gemini coming at you today. So Becky and I are birthday twins. So June 1st, uh, we have our double Gemini sign. So the four of us are going to be up here. We've got this great music to support us. So um, first of all, I want to, uh, I always forget to do this. So I want to make sure to welcome everybody here who's watching through Facebook and Zoom. Because I always forget that. And then afterwards, I'm like, damn, I forgot that. So um, really, really welcome to all of you on Facebook and Zoom. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you, those of you who got out here today, even though the weather is so gorgeous that I 100% know that you were tempted just to stay home uh, and or stay outside and start your gardening and do all the things because it's so gorgeous out, right? So um, I just want to thank you. You'll notice that I had um, Becky move the screen because I miss the tree uh, sometimes. And um, today I need the tree, or I want the tree, should I say. I don't need it, but I want the tree. And I want you to focus in on the one. The one. Here at Unity, we know that we are one. And sometimes we forget, but we know we are. And for those of us that practice that, it takes practice sometimes for us to feel that and to remember it. And it is always one of our guiding principles is that we are one. And so today, as I talk about moving from fear to faith, I would just invite you to keep that notion in mind. So the first thing I want to do, if you'll indulge me, is I want to take just a moment to kind of feel into you. If you would give me your presence in this moment. Maybe take a breath from that heart center place and let me feel into you. I always also, you know, if you've heard me speak before, you know that I love to invite all the light beings and all the people who have already transitioned to join us that would like to be here that are already with us all the time, um, but that are here to uh, expand our love and expand our circle. So I want to invite in all of our folks, Karen, Anola, Vi, Kidney, Bev, Chris. Chris is always with me every time I speak. There we go. So the first thing I want you to know is need do nothing. Like you don't have to do anything. There's nothing that you have to do while you're here. Nada. This is nothing. And things are going to work out for you. Things are always going to work out for you, and you don't have to do anything. And I want to share some practices that I know and some ways that help me keep coming back to the love that I want to be, because I will forget that I am made of love and that my commitment is to be love and see love everywhere I go. I am that kid who has a cape 
I have been that child. My very first, one of my very first memories is driving my tricycle as fast as I possibly could off of the, of the <laughs> off of my sister's balcony. And I was convinced that I was Evil Knievel and I could go fast enough to make that thing fly, right? And it went thunk, right? And it knocked the wind out of me and it didn't stop me. Right? It never stopped me from climbing trees and jumping off and from being bold and from being one of the first people to do stuff. Right? So I came out as a lesbian in 1985. I came out as a transgender person in 1997. I took testosterone in 2001. I always identified as a non-binary human, but I came out as a non-binary human and went off testosterone in 2018. I have been an out, queer, trailblazing human my entire life. Thank you. And I have always done it as, as best I could to be a leader in love. I started telling my story when I was in 1992 and 93 on campus. And I would literally go to college classes. And I would sit there with two lesbians and two gay men. And we would raise our hand. And I would say, hi, my name is Janet. That's my dead name. My name is Janet. And I'm a lesbian. And now you know one. Because in 1990, one and two, people thought they did not know gay and lesbian humans. There were lesbians in their sororities that they didn't know existed. There were gay and lesbians among them constantly, and they didn't know that. And so they could trash us out loud in front of everybody, and it was okay. But I was not willing to have that be the story. So I told my story of being a suicidal youth and being a drunk ass all the way through high school. And my first coaches were my sponsors in AA. They would say things to me like, kid, you want to play Ain't It Awful with me? Right? You want to feel sorry for yourself? <laughs> Let me tell you about my drunk ass. Right? These people held me accountable to show up powerfully every day, no matter how much pity I wanted to pour on myself. Right? So today, this week, was a kind of challenge for me that in the past might have kicked sorry, kicked my ass into fear in a way that would destabilize me. But you all have led me into love here. And I have the group downstairs and you all holding this space for me to show up as love over and over again. You cannot, I cannot tell you back in 2016 when they started all the anti-trans legislation, how much it made me squirm. I would sit sometimes in those meetings and I would gnash my teeth and be so angry that I couldn't even move. This week, we had a non-binary human who was 16 years old who had been bullied for over a year, get beat up, and then die the next day. Now, it sent me into rage. It sent me into fear. And it sent me almost into hate for about two hours. But I practice, because you taught me that I practice watching myself. I practice being here in this now moment. And I got to see who am I being with my children when I'm angry and frustrated and railing against that. I show up crouchety and angry, and they don't know why I'm mad. They don't know why I'm sad. And I can make up stories that people are happy this happened, and I, oh gosh, I can go there. Right? But I'm mindful now. I'm mindful now. And I'm heavily meditated. And being heavily meditated is so important. Phil spoke about meditation so eloquently last week. Being heavily meditated makes me pause. But more than anything, 
what we know is that we are one. Those people who hurt all of us are us. We are them. And we can't hate the haters because it just adds more hate. We can't fear the people who fear me. They fear me so much. And you cannot fear me this much and not want to be me. I know this. Because I used to say I wouldn't walk across the street to piss on a queer if they were on fire. I called a radio station when I was 14 years old to say all gay people should be shot. And I'm not kidding. That's how much I hated my own guts, right? You cannot hate like that unless it's in you. So to all those people who hate and who find laws to illustrate their hate, we just are going to have to love them. We are going to have to tell them that we understand. We know that that Victoria's Secret nightie feels so good under your suit as you bang that gavel. We know this. We know this. We know that I'm in you because we are one. So we don't have to do anything because it, it's all going to work out. And that's the kind of faith that I have. And there are things that we can do <laughs> when these kind of things happen to just rip us out of love and into fear and into like, oh my god, what's going to happen? Because it's terrifying sometimes. If we really look at what's going on, like we have a rally at the Chiefs and how many people get shot? I mean, come on, right? We can go to fear immediately. It's like, ah, it'll seize us up. But we, in this community, are leaders in love because we know about the one. And we know that we can't hate the haters. We can't be sick enough to heal the sick. We can't be poor enough to make the people who are poor rich. That when we're one, our vibration of love, our intense willingness to keep showing up as love is the one thing that's going to make a difference. It's the one thing that will push us forward consistently is our willingness to show up as love. And so how do we do that? Well, the first thing we have to do is be willing, right? Those coaches, those AA sponsors of mine, man, I used to carry it, wear a key around my neck because willingness is the key. <laughs> like you have to be willing first. And man, sometimes it feels better to rail against and to be mad and because it, it raises our cortisol and we get to run around, roll around in that, right? And we get to be right. We get to be right because we're right. Right? We're right. We're right. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know we're right. We're right, right? <laughs> I mean, we're right. They're wrong. We're right. <laughs> and so it feels good to be right. It feels really good to be right sometimes. And being right cuts off the love. And so we have to be willing to give up being right. We have to be willing to just, and man, I tell you what, all you got to do is say I'm willing, and all of a sudden you'll start being guided to, to go towards that love because the willingness is the most important piece. We have to show up as willing rather than no, I'm not going to go near them. They're haters. I don't like them. I don't love them. I'm afraid of them. Yeah, right? I'm right. They're wrong. I have to start being willing. So for me, willingness has always been the number one key. I am willing, and I am coachable. I got a sponsor. I got a coach. I got somebody telling me what to do. I will do it. <laughs> like I'm like, OK, I'm on board. I'm willing. So the first step is being willing. The next step is to get yourself heavily meditated. And I'm not kidding about that. <laughs> like being in this now moment, Meditation helps us, and I loved that Greg Tamblin said that laughter really works to help us, you know, what do you say, a week of, uh, 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 10 minutes of laughter is worth a week of meditation? I love that, because laughter also brings us into this now moment, right? So anything that you can do that gets you into this now moment, 
Because in this now moment, where I'm standing on this platform with both feet on the ground in my socks that say the future is inclusive, in this now moment, all is well. And I got none but love coming at me because I see you. And I can see you loving me. And I appreciate that because I can feel you. And so in this now moment, all is well. All is well. And when I'm not in this moment, when my brain or my little mind piece is out there extrapolating out every fear I have, making a story about it, that's what raises my cortisol. That's what gets me freaked out. 99% of the time, what you're afraid of isn't happening right now. It's not happening right now. It's only happening up here. But boy, can we freak ourselves out. <laughs> we could be like, oh, freaked out. And if anybody said, what's going on? Well, this is going on, this is going on. Well, really, because you're sitting right in front of me. So I don't see that happening. Right? In this now moment, all is well. We had another speaker that, rem that reminded me of my next favorite thing. And that's from Emmett Fox. If you don't know who Emmett Fox is, Emmett Fox is a new thought author, again, from the early 1900s. These are my favorite people to read. I love, love, love Emmett Fox. And I hear Emmett Fox talking to me a lot. <laughs> Emmett Fox and Charles and Myrtle Fillmore and Emma Curtis Hopkins and Florence Scovel Shin and all those people who came before us, who were the trailblazers before us and taught us what we know about today. Emmett Fox wrote it. I love him because Emmett Fox wrote short things. And I like short. <laughs> like, I don't, I have so many half read personal development books on my shelf, it's not even funny. When I wrote my book, I was like under 98 pages. <laughs> like, I don't do long books. Like, it just, I don't like it. It's just too much, for too many notes. I can't do it. Uh, so, Emmett Fox wrote pamphlets. And so, if you can get into Emmett Fox, Emmett Fox has a ton of pamphlets out there. And you can buy them on Amazon for like 99 cents. Like they are super cheap, right? Um, and one of my favorite ones is called The Golden Key. And a lot of you are familiar with The Golden Key or the phrase Golden Key It, right? So basically what Emmett says in The Golden Key is that every time you think of something that freaks you out, that scares you, that thinks you need to be in control. Like every time you have a thought like that, think about God instead. That's all you got to do. Think about God instead. Now that sounds really simple, right? Well, that's easy, <laughs> right? Easy button. That's easy. It's not as easy as it sounds, but it is. It's very easy. Now, I like to say think of love instead. Because for me, I use the word love instead of God. When I think of God, I think of love. My God is love. My God is the one love that is that oneness that we are. That is what God is to me. So if every time I get scared, every time I think I need to grab a hold of control, every time I start to freak out, I think about love instead, what's going to happen? I'm going to relax a little bit, right? Because think about the energy of fear and everything's energy. We know this, right? Everything's energy. So the energy of fear is like this, right? The energy of anger is like this. The energy of defiance is like this. It's all about resistance. It goes like this. And the energy of love is like this. And when I'm like this, no one and no thing can hurt me because I am you. And I am you. And I am you. And no matter what, no matter what, I am love. And I have a commitment. And I took it on this year because, see, my trauma pattern is to fight. If I get pissed, man, if something happens to me, I come out swinging. Right? I come out physically swinging. Like, I have a jump scare, a little trauma. Like, I've been jump scared enough that if you come up and try to scare me, my fist goes faster than I can even think about. And I'm not kidding. It happened to me one time with my child. He came up and jump scared me, and I'm like, I'm running, I'm, you know, I'm like, pow! Right? I'm going to punch. I come out swinging physically 
and emotionally. If I get caught, if I get to start going, I'm going to start yelling. I'm going to start fighting. That's my pattern. It's my old trauma pattern. It's how things have been. And when I get really freaked out, first I get scared, and then I become a fuck you. <laughs> I'm just going to take myself away from you then. Because you don't get to have me if you're going to be somebody that scares me or freaks me out. And this year, this year, I really have a commitment to give that up. I gave it up for Advent, and then I gave them giving it up for Lent. Because when I'm an F you or F it, then I lose all my power to lead. And I am a natural born jump off the, the roof. I mean, can't tell you my roofs I jumped off of. Right? Jumping out of my willow tree, jumping off roofs. I am that human being that is always going to be out there ready to lead. And that is my truest nature. And I resist it sometimes because it scares the crap out of me. Really. <laughs> I get scared. And then I worry that people are judging me and I judge myself and all that up here. Right? But I know that my truest nature is love and that I'm a natural born leader in love. And that is who I want to be and how I want to show up. And when things like this happen, it's easy to forget. And it's easy to go down that rabbit hole of being right and being righteous and having all the answers. But instead, today, in this now moment, I am love. And I love you. And the love that we generate in this room alone, we just shifted the world right now, in this now moment. Thank you. Well, let's see, how can I follow that? <laughs> well, I'm going to do something that's kind of leans a little softer. It's more of an instrumental. Um, but it's, uh, I, I talk about love and, uh, hold on, <laughs> um, and fear and faith. And I kind of think of myself uh, as, uh, as faith is a way of getting rid of fear. Uh, I don't, the idea that fear is what leads us to faith. Um, I think faith should be a key to unlock the door and open up and get rid of that fear instead of using the fear for your faith. Anyway, there's just a little instrumental and I'll end it with a little something. Find the key. Unlock the door. Let the light shine in. If you want to get comfortable wherever you are,
Take a couple of deep breaths. Maybe hum out. <sighs> nice to take a moment with you just to be still, be quiet. be here in this now moment. We're going to start by grounding you. I invite you to just pretend using our imagination is one of the most powerful tools we have. We're just going to pretend. Pretend that you have roots coming out of your feet. Busting through the cement and going down through the second floor of this building busting down all the way through the foundation and through the earth. As those roots travel down, down, you can imagine the sediment and the water and the silt. Maybe leaves, twigs, as those roots of yours go down, down. So get down to the core of the earth, the heart of the mother. I want you to wrap or anchor your roots to that core in whatever way your imagination does. You can tie a knot, you can hook it in, you can wrap around, just use your imagination. Now I want you to imagine that good earth energy coming back up on those, back up those roots, back up to you, through the building, through the floor, back up into your feet and between your toes and feel that good earth energy grounding you. Feel that energy coming up your ankles, over your calves and knees. Feel that good earth energy coming all the way up your thighs and your pelvis, over your hips, up to your solar plexus. There you are planted, grounded. And I want you to remember that you belong here. You belong here. You can say that to yourself silently. You belong here. I belong here. I am one with this earth. I am one with every other entity, being, star, tree. Our roots are like the trees. They're interconnected all over the world. And we are one. Now let's take your focus up to your crown chakra very tip of your head. The first part of you, if you had a, I don't want to say natural, vaginal birth, I don't know, that came into this planet, that crown chakra, I want you to imagine a light like that feels like when you stepped outside yesterday and it was sunny. If you stepped in the shade, it was cold a little. When you stepped out in the sun, it feels like that. You should imagine that coming down the tip of your head and now melting down over your head and down over your third eye, in the middle of your forehead, over your eyebrows and down your face. Just let it melt you, melt into that warm, Love, light, it's coming down all the way over your face and your mouth, over your throat chakra, down your shoulders, you feel it melt down each of your arms, all the way down to meet that grounding energy. Ah. 
and being fed by source and grounded. And now I want you to put your focus on your heart chakra. This is a place I believe where human and spirit meld together. I want you just to imagine as we take our next in breath and let it out, that that out breath is going through your heart and opening it up. Opening up that heart, blowing out any residue of fear of being right. <sighs> opening up that heart to love, to the one love that we are. And as you sit there in love for a few minutes, I'm going to invite you to just focus on that. Other thoughts come up. Celebrate that you noticed. And bring yourself back into your heart and listen. Just listen to what it has to say to you this morning. Now you can thank yourself, thank any spirit or guidance you might have just gotten. If you can say that, say I love you to yourself, say I love you. And we start to come back into this room. Move whatever calls you to move to get yourself back into your body. If you don't already have a practice of telling yourself you love yourself on the regular, I would really invite you to work on that. I say work on that or play on that because for some of you, if you say I love you, it sets off your BS meter. And so it takes something sometimes to get there. But what I notice, now that I do love myself and I tell myself on the regular, I love you, and I hear I love you, that when I'm feeling off, I'm feeling wonky, quicker to anger, or quicker to judgment, I haven't been saying I love you. I haven't been practicing loving myself and dipping into the love that I am and the love that you are. So this week, I invite you in your meditation throughout your day to just say the words, I love you and I love you. Namaste.
Well, let's finish off with a little gospel tune by Keb Moe. Well, you might be saved, might be reborn, might own a car with a big loud horn. Maybe it's just news on your television, or maybe it's God trying to get your attention. Are you an engineer working on the farm, or a Casanova with a whole lot of charm? Maybe it's a mouse living in your kitchen or maybe it's God trying to get your attention well it might be bad and it might be good might be made of steel might be made of wood maybe it's just news on your television or maybe it's God trying to get your attention well it might be in the church house might be in the street one way or another every soul has got to me might be in the city and it might be in the town one way or another gonna find a higher ground where you might be smart and you might be dumb well you get that answer when the message comes maybe it's just news on your television or maybe it's God trying to get your attention. Well, it might be in the church house, might be in the street, one way or another. Every soul has got to be. Might be in the city and it might be in the town. One way or another. Gonna find a higher ground. Well, they might be deaf or you might be blind. You'll get that message right in your mind. Might look like a plan or a coalition. Or maybe it's God trying to get your attention. Maybe it's just news on your television. Or maybe it's God trying to get your attention. Thanks so much, Greg. And as our ushers come forward for our time of thanks, I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our hearts. Let's affirm together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. And as the love offering is collected, let's join Holly in singing, Pour Yourself in Me.
As our ushers come forward, here's our prayer of thanks. Please listen. We are grateful and we bless the flow of good that supports our unity community. We bless the givers who give their time, talent, and treasure. We stand in the knowing that the flow of good goes forth only to return again and again. And so it is. Amen. And now for our opportunities. Yes. We did it. We did the technical thing with the thing coming down and going back up. Yes. I, w I was worried about it, but I was trying to channel what you were saying, Jay, about be in the moment, be in the here and now. It's fine. The projector is fine. <laughs> A special welcome to our guests today here and coming through us to time and space. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. If you would like more information about the Unity Movement and Unity of Lawrence, please pick up a welcome packet in our foyer. And our new March calendars are also available in the foyer. Thank you so much, Kathy Moreland, for this beautiful work of art right here. Our Sunday Lunch Bunch is meeting today at Aladdin Cafe, 1021 Massachusetts Street. Everyone is welcome. The fourth Sunday drumming circle is this afternoon at 1.30 p.m. Everyone is welcome. Please remember that open meditation with Phil Roger meets on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Again, everyone is welcome. Come and hang out with your Unity communities on Wednesdays from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. in the fellowship hall downstairs. All ages are welcome. Please see Sarah or Bethany with any questions. It's time to come together and laugh again. Plan on coming to the Humor Concert with Greg Tamlin, who's also our speaker next week, next Sunday, March 3rd at 1.30 p.m. Tickets are $15 to $20 sliding scale and will be available at the door. Our next Italian class will meet on March 3rd, and Francesca will have a special guest. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Please do the flyer in the foyer for more information. This spring, we will be starting a Youth of Unity chapter here at Unity of Lawrence. The Youth of Unity, also acronymed U, is an international youth group for teens aged 14 to 18 that encourages and assists their spiritual growth, creating connections, and helping them express their most authentic selves. We anticipate starting up our U chapter by mid to late March. If you have a teen that is age 14 to 18 and would like more information, please contact Jay Pryor at j.pryor at gmail.com. 9D Breathwork Journeys continues March 4th at 6 p.m. with Sabrina Channel from Channels of Healing. I love that her last name is like perfect for what she does. That's so great. Sabrina Channel will be guiding breathwork journeys on the first and third Mondays of the month in the fellowship hall. Each class is $50. Space is limited, so please call or text 785-393-6400 to reserve your space or if you have any questions. We have an opportunity to provide food and our hospitality to two families for a week in March with the group Family Promise. There are a couple of ways to share. Number one, we have the three dinners covered. Yay, thank you everyone for signing up for that. And number two, we can also provide a simple breakfast and lunch groceries for one week for the families. You can sign up to purchase items that will be brought to the church or a Walmart card to fund the purchase of items on the list. More information is po posted in the foyer. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Uh, for, for those listening at home, we have all of those volunteer opportunities signed up. Go us. Amazing. And join us next Sunday with Greg Tamblin, who will bring us special music and the message, The Sacred and the Silly. And now it's time to rise as you are able to sing the peace song. <laughs> 